Good afternoon all. Uh, today I'm going to... No, I'm going to do a more interesting introduction than that. Good afternoon all. What is up? Um, today I'm going to have a look at this stuff. It's the last few remaining PWM5 solar charge controllers. They're very dusty. Um, there are one or two sort of finished, completed ones. There's also a lot of dross in here, like something I obviously tried to um, rework with hot glue, reseal it after I'd cut it open. That was probably a fail. Um, there's a very early prototype with early firmware and I think early hardware that might even have used a Zener diode, which was hopelessly unreliable. So um, I want to rework this project um, so that it's all surface mount because this original design was pretty much all through hole. I think I used one or two surface mount components. Let's take a, another look at that. So here are some examples of the solar charge controller. This one um, is in its finished case with um, an internal uh, transparent bit of heat shrink. Then I put on an external black bit of heat shrink and stuck on this uh, label. So that's a completed one with its external anti-reverse back feed protection diode. So this is how it looks and I'll zoom in a little bit here um, on the printed circuit board version. Um, you can just make out some of the um, screen printing there on the PCB. That's the uh, microcontroller and that's the MOSFET there. And then there was a, an earlier version which was made on Vero board. Now it's pretty much the same layout and in fact when I did this uh, board layout, I'll show this in more detail in a moment, I um, pretty much laid it out as Vero board on a printed circuit board. You'll see what I mean in a moment, but here's one um, again with the uh, the MOSFET there and the microcontroller down there. Now let's have a look at this um, panel which I just found. This is a panel from um, a local printed circuit board company um, who made up these panels of um, the printed circuit boards. They're partly assembled, just a few of the discretes. Uh, the blue LED is on there, but you'll see what I mean if I flip this over um, about the layout being pretty much sort of um, Vero board style. Uh, you can see that I've kind of run tracks in lines. Yes, there's a whole line of tracks there, another line across there. I mean, some of it I uh, rerouted because the original Vero board, for example, this wire that runs all the way around there, the original Vero board had a link running across there on the top side. Now you can also see that there are a few um, surface mount components on here. And what I tended to do was I soldered them on as they fell. So if they fell upside down, pointing down, I'd solder them on like that. There are a few that fell the right side up. So there you can see it's a 224, uh, 220K resistor. That's a 1206 because it happened to fit across the pitch. That's actually just soldered onto a couple of pads that have been drilled. But I did put a couple of um, surface mount positions in. And this one I put in a through hole there and a surface mount position. And I started using the surface mount more than the through hole as time went on. Let's see if there's one. Uh, there, that's the right way up. Oh yes, there it is there. It's um, a 472, I think. So that's um, 4K7. So you can kind of see the evolution of this from a sort of relatively square shaped piece of Vero board to an identical um, sized printed circuit board where a lot of the sort of Vero board um, attributes were brought over onto the printed circuit board. Little bit of a sort of first foray into the use of surface mount components, but now I want to completely redesign this um, using circuit boards from JLC PCB and go, well, mostly surface mount. I can't quite bring myself to go completely surface mount. I'll show you what I've got to so far. So here's the schematic that I hand drew, um, the original schematic that never really got altered other than a few um, possibilities for using surface mount components, um, particularly these dual diodes, which could replace, um, well, actually what I've done now is I've replaced this pair of diodes with a dual diode. 
which are joined here at the cathode and the anode, you can get that variant. And then these two diodes here are joined at the anode, so you can get um, them in a SOT23 package where they're common at the anode. So that's one dual diode, and this is another dual diode. Um, this was a, a sort of actual size representation of the, the new layout for surface mount, which I called the gum stick uh, design. So I'm sticking with that name, gum stick. I'm going to go to a surface mount, pick 12F683. Um, surface mount, resistors, capacitors, transistors, and these diodes. But I'm going to stick with the through hole um, regulator just for the time being. It's an interim measure, um, mainly because I've got hundreds of them, I think. Um, through hole MOSFET, the IRF3205. I don't have many of those, but um, I want to do the through hole one first, and then I might go to the surface mount version of that. Through hole for this P6K33CA. This is a transorb, a transient suppression uh, diode. It's it's kind of two diodes pointing at each other, but it has a Zener effect at high voltages. So the idea is that it can um, sort of shunt out high voltage spikes and it's a fairly beefy component. So it can uh, take out uh, the effects of lightning strikes, not direct probably, but uh, nearby lightning strikes, this would be able to shunt out the high voltage if it came down here because of course here this is where the solar panel connects you might have quite long wires running up to the panel and they could possibly attract um, not necessarily lightning but other forms of um, electromagnetic interference possibly even uh, radio transmissions from emergency service vehicles right so using easy EDA I have uh, redrawn this as a schematic so that I could um, immediately produce um, a PCB from this. You can see here that I've gone with these dual diodes. Now I've actually gone for BAT54 because you can get all the variants. Uh, this one is common anode, so they call it a BAT54A. This one is common anode on one and cathode on the other. They call that the BAT54S. These are shock key diodes, but I can't see any problem with these being shock key. Um, if anything, that's going to help because it's going to, this is the charge pump circuit here, which generates a voltage above um, the 12 volt lead acid battery voltage to push into the MOSFET um, gate because the source of the MOSFET here is also at um, the positive of the battery voltage. So you need a voltage above that to drive the gate. So this generates about, I think, this charge pump. It's this diode and these two and these two capacitors. Generates about eight volts, I think, above uh, whatever the battery voltage is and presents that to the gate of the MOSFET. Uh, so here's the pick. Um, it's a 12F683. Not a very neat um, sort of schematic for this. It's just got all the wires coming out of one side. But that's fine. I've routed them off to the various places they go. Uh, two lines go to the charge pump. One goes is used as an analog input and is reading the battery voltage um, divided down by this resistor divider, little uh, noise suppression capacitor there. And the PWM output, this chip only has one PWM output, of course drives the high side driver so that it uh, controls the MOSFET uh, with pulse width modulation. Another output here just drives the blue LED. Now, although you can print um, the schematic from Easy EDA, uh, there's no option that I can see to print the actual PCB layout. So I'll just go on screen now and we'll have a quick look at how far I've got with that. And uh, yeah, so here's the PCB layout. That's a little bit, um, probably a bit hard to see because it's all on black and these colours aren't very vivid. You can select layers. So that's the top side uh, surface mount pad and track layer. Um, that's the bottom side layer and that's the silk layer. But uh, actually you can probably see it better in this photo view. So let's go to that. Um, so that's it in a sort of simulated green with the silk screen in white. Now you can look at the top side or the bottom side. So on the bottom side we've just got some, oh that one's not quite at 45 degrees. That's annoying me. Um, we've got some large, uh, these are 80 thou width tracks for battery side and solar panel side. 
this is the MOSFET here. So, I mean, essentially, it's a simple circuit. You've got a solar panel one side, battery the other, and the MOSFET joins the two together uh, when it's turned on. And of course, it's being pulse width modulated. So let's go back to the uh, top side and we can turn the silk layer. So that's no silk layer. And you can see all the uh, surface map pads. Here's the microcontroller. Um, let's turn the silk layer back on with silk layer. Uh, LED in the middle here. I've gone for a 1206 because I know I've got some 1206 blue LEDs. All the other components I've gone for 0805. Here, as I say, is the through-hole regulator, through-hole capacitors, through-hole transient suppression diode, and through-hole uh, MOSFET. Now, I put these connectors on. I've no real intention of using the connectors, but I wanted somewhere to solder my wires. But I'm just wondering whether these need to be drilled at all, or whether they could just be simply copper pads on the board where I would solder the wires for um, the solar side and the battery side. I'm just not sure about that yet. So maybe I'll go for this as a first run. And then when I build it and use it, I'll probably identify what isn't quite right. And then I can make changes to that later. So looking at um, the old schematic, and I quite like adding these little drawings um, of some of the components so that you at a glance can see uh, you know, for example, that's the regulator in, ground and out is that way round. I quite like having all that information on my schematic. Um, or I could use this schematic. It's not quite as easy to read because everything's a bit smaller. Um, I just wanted to go through a couple of boxes which I've got here, um, which I've marked up as SMD discretes and SMD semis. So I've probably got um, quite a few of these components in these two boxes um, for this because I started sort of buying and stockpiling uh, components for this project a long time ago. Uh, never got around to making this um, surface mount gum stick, this sort of long, thin uh, form factor device. So I just wanted to have a quick look at what's in these boxes. Uh, right, so in the SMD semis box, we've got uh, this stuff. Let's have a quick look at that. Right, this one says 3906. I'm pretty sure these are the surface mount versions of the 2N3906, and I think they're called MMBT3906. Uh, I think that's on this uh, diagram. Yes, yeah, so if we can see that, let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, so this one is the MMBT3904 LT1G, whatever that means, and the PNP is MMBT3906, uh, and there are two of those, there's one up there and one there. Right, the 3906 just says um, 2A on it. And let's just have a quick look at the 3904. I'm not sure whether we're gonna be able to see this. I'll zoom in. Uh, yeah, this one says 1AM. So let's quickly look those up and just uh, check that they are what I think they are. Yeah, so SMD1AM immediately brings up the MMBT3904. Uh, the other one was 2A, so let's try that. 2A. And yes, there it is, the MMBT3906. So those would appear to be correct. Right, I found some uh, eight pin uh, soiks here, so pretty certain, it's hard to read, but yes, those are the 12F683 uh, microcontrollers. Uh, right, this label just fell off, but I'm pretty sure it fell off this bag. This says it's um, 200 pieces of the BAV 99. Now the BAV 99 is this um, dual diode in a SOT23 where the common goes on one to the cathode and one to the anode. So I could use these. Um, I, I have changed to the BAT 54 which comes in different variants, but yes, I could use the BAV99. It would actually be for this pair now, because this pair are common at the anode. And I can't remember, I think it might have been a, a BA something 70, I think, which is the common anode one, but I just can't remember. But yeah, they could be useful. There's also um, this one, which is just 1N4148. So let's have a quick look at those. Um, yeah, these are just um, regular, I think they're 0805 
two pin diodes with the cathode marked there. So I'm pretty sure they're just surface mount versions of the uh, 1N4 and 48 in a plastic enclosure. Uh, so the 1N4 and 48 is marked A2. So I'll just check online quickly to see whether A2 is in fact that diode. Um, yeah, this one's a little more difficult to find, but uh, down here we have the 1N4148WS, small signal switching diode, and there's a mention of A2 down here. So that looks pretty convincing. Um, what are these ones? These are SOT23 3 pin, and they're marked A7. Let's check them out. Ah, okay, these are uh, BAV99, the uh, dual diode. You can see that it says Mark A7, so I better put that label in there before I start to get completely and utterly confused. Um, and in SMD discretes, I don't think I meant discretes really, um, these are passives aren't they? These are capacitors and resistors. And in here we've got things like this, uh, 47N 50 volt 0805, it's a Y5V chip capacitor, pack of 100, so there's 100. In there, I've written 47N on the actual, um, what's that band called? The paper carrier, I suppose. And here's a 220 picofarad, 50 volt. That's uh, this one down here, 220 puff. Uh, this is NPO. I think as they get to smaller values, they go to NPO. And the higher values, Y5V, there are other categorizations for capacitors. I think it's mainly to do with um, tolerance, I think, how precise they are, a uh, pack of 100 of the 220 puff. And I've got some 0805 resistors here. Let's take a look at, see if we can actually read uh, the marking on there. Yeah, I think it's this way up. Oh, well, some of them will be one way around and some will, will be the other way around, won't they? Uh, yeah, I think you can just about see there, 224. So that's 220K. There are several of those on this uh, circuit. Uh, those three there in the high side driver. Yeah, so I think I've got most of the components I need to build my uh, gumstick version of this solar charge controller, which will be mostly surface mount, whereas this was mostly through hole. Can't quite bring myself to go completely surface mount yet. One of the problems is I need a replacement for the LP2950. Um, now this is a, well, it's an LDO five volt regulator, but more important than the low dropout, it's very low quiescent current. So what I really need is a surface mount five volt regulator. Low dropout is not particularly important because the battery is 12 volts. My output is five. So I'm not really interested in the, the low differential between the input and the output, but I do want a very low quiescent current because one of the whole purposes of this solar charge controller is that it has a very tiny current draw um, in and of itself, it itself draws very little current. Um, methods for achieving that were the charge pump is a very efficient way to um, generate a, a higher voltage. It uses virtually no current at all once this output capacitor is charged up. The pick is running at something like 500 kilohertz, I think. So it's running very slow and that means that its current consumption is very low. And of course this uh, regulator circuit had this very low quiescent current. Um, uh, regulator. Other techniques were fairly high values of um, resistors in the potential divider here. I think the PIC recommends that you have a 10k maximum impedance. Well I've got 20k um, and 80k there. So I suppose it's a 20k, slightly less than 20k if you uh, assume these rails are connected together. That's the postman. Uh, and also in the high side driver I've got very high values of resistors here, 220k so that this circuit uh, uses very little current as well. Uh, so yes, I think it's time I placed my order for some PCBs with JLC PCB. Those should be back uh, within a few days, a week or so maybe, and uh, then I can start building one of these things. Cheerio.